What's up, YouTubes? As you're probably aware, human hearing ranges from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Now, this is an averaging, of course. You would probably hear more or less depending on a number of factors, such as age and how loud you listen to your music. So, I thought it would be a really good idea to set up a hearing test to give you guys a clear picture of what you can really hear. Once we've gone through this test, I'll offer some music-related advice. This should really come in handy for when you're mixing your music. So what I have here are two tracks. On each one, I've set up an oscillator that'll generate certain frequencies. Now on this first track here, the oscillator sweeps through a number of bass frequencies from 20 hertz to 100 hertz. And on the second track here, it sweeps in the opposite direction from 20,000 Hz all the way down to 10,000 Hz. Your objective is to listen as I play back the tracks and decide at which point you can hear the oscillator. Now, I'm going to play these back one at a time. So you may have to scrub this video back a couple of times to really get to pinpoint what frequency you can hear. Now, before I start a couple of warnings, First, listen to these tests at normal volumes. These tests will really challenge your speakers to reproduce the low and high end, and you could damage your speakers or headphones if you turn it up way too high past normal listening levels. Now, the same goes for your ears, right? Take care to listen to these tests at normal volumes. Don't get tempted to turn it up because you don't want to feel like you might miss out certain frequencies. You can always replace a speaker or a headphone, not your hearing. Second, you should have a good set of headphones or speakers. You want to use speakers that can reproduce the frequencies I'm about to play. Now keep in mind that some manufacturers actually make claims that their speakers can reproduce the frequencies I'm about to play, but they really can't. Okay, so now that you've got a decent pair of speakers or headphones, Let's start with the bass frequencies. I hit play and you keep an eye on this number here. It'll change as the automation changes and when you hear a sound, write down what that number is. This is the lowest frequency you can hear in the bass end of the frequency spectrum. Okay, so let's do the high end now. Now you keep an eye on this number here and decide when you can hear. That'll be the limit of the high end that you can hear.
Now, for most people, you'll find that you really can't hear from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. Don't worry, this is normal. I have normal hearing and I can hear 23 hertz to 16,000 hertz. Now, if you visit this test, say, once a year, you can graph out how your hearing range is reducing over time. Again, don't let that scare you. It's quite normal. I think it's a very cool thing to know. So, what's the musical value we can take from this? Well, let's talk about the bass end for a sec. You see, though I can hear down to 23 hertz, I can't differentiate between 24, 25, and 26 hertz. In fact, the oscillator sounds quite the same for me between 26 and 29 hertz. So, if there was a bass instrument that played a low A, A sharp, and B, I wouldn't really hear much of a difference. It all seemed almost like the same thing to me. It'd be blurry for me. Now, I know advanced users are talking about the added harmonics, but if I can't hear the fundamental, I don't have any real musical value from the notes that were played. I clearly notice each frequency range when the oscillator hits to about 43 to 48 hertz. That's where the real musical value of the super lows is to me. That is where the super low end doesn't wash away in a blur for me, it's clear. Now by the time it gets to about 52 hertz, I begin to feel like this is where I could play something super low that I could have no changes that will be picked up efficiently by someone with normal hearing. Imagine that, 52 hertz. Now it's very true that you feel these really low sounds between 30 and 40 hertz rather than hearing them. So in certain types of music, mostly electronic music, I would use a switched drone type of sound at this very low frequency to give that bottom end a real solid feeling. I would still not use it as the primary bass sound at this frequency range. Another thing to keep in mind is that the low end really takes up a lot of space in your mix. The less low end you have, the more sound you can fill up in your mix. So what I generally do is roll off most of my tracks with a high pass filter set to about 30 hertz. So here's what I'd do. I'd bring up a simple channel EQ. Set the high pass. Crank it up to about 30 hertz. And give it a high slope. Now I know that I've probably made a lot of enemies by just showing this, but seriously think about it. Can you hear that low? Does it even make sense to have those frequencies present in a mix if you can't hear them? They'll just take up room. You might even be thinking that if your music is played in really loud systems, such as those in a club, you want to have those really low frequencies present. I mean, those speakers can really reproduce the low end, right? Well, yet again, I have the same argument. You can't hear it. Why waste the space in your mix? There really is no musical value, guys. On the high end of things, I can hear up to 16,000 hertz. And anything above that is wasted on me. Imagine that. That's about 4,000 hertz off the top end. Now, I may or may not roll off the highs because they don't take up much space in the mix. But it doesn't make sense to me to have sounds present in a song so high that a person won't be able to hear. So, I hope this has been useful, guys. Stop by and run this test once in a while. Graph out what your hearing is doing over time. Make your mixes clearer by removing the low-end blur. And I'll catch you on the flip side. See you around, YouTubes.